This is a level two practice paper, part two of section B, where you can use a calculator. You can also use a pen, pencil, eraser, ruler, protector, a pair of compasses or tracing paper. We'll work out these together, showing the working out throughout. So we've got question number one. This graph can be used to convert between gallons and litres. And we have to convert 60 litres to gallons. So looking at the graph, there is the litres. And we're looking at 60 litres. So we'll go up to meet the line using a ruler, ideally. And then across to see how many gallons this is going to be equal to. So there is 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is about 13 gallons. And we'll include the answer in the box. In the Second part of the question, we've got Anaya used 44 litres of fuel, Mira used 8 gallons of fuel. Anaya used more fuel than Mira. Use the graph to work out how much more. Remember to give units with your answer. So we've got 44 litres and 8 gallons, comparing the two. So 44 litres. That must be here because there are five units between 40 and 50, so this is going up in twos. And eight gallons should be here. So we could work it out, work out the difference either in litres or gallons, whichever way. I'm going to do it in litres, so I'm going to go down. And this number here should be 32, 34, 36. And this was 44. So 44 take away 36 gives me eight litres. I could have done it in gallons, so extend, extending this line here, it'd be equal to two gallons. But I'm going to stick to the litres, so I'm going to write that as my answer. Moving on to the next question. We've got David reads this advert on his county council website. 70% of the area of woodland in the county is native woodland. This means there are 350 kilometres squared of native woodland in the county. So this 70% is equal to 350 kilometres squared. Work out the area of woodland in the county that is not native woodland. So I think there are many ways you could solve this. The method that I'm going to use is rather visual. So it helps you understand what you're doing and it's easy to work out as well. But feel free to use any method, especially that you can use a calculator here. So I'm going to represent the 70% of the whole woodland area. Here we've got five equal parts and then another five to make this 10. So this represents 100% of the whole woodland area in the county. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the native woodland area, which is equal to 70%. So 7 out of 10 or 70 out of 100. And this is the non-native 
this is the part that we need to work out. Now we'll use the information that we have for the native woodland area to help us with the rest. So this is equal to 350 kilometers squared. Now, since there are seven equal parts, if I divide this by seven, it's going to give me 50 for each and every one of them. So 10% is equal to 50, in other words. And since we said that these parts will be the same or identical, then this means that this is 50 as well, 50 and 50. So this area here is equal to 100 and 50 kilometers squared. So we, because the numbers were easy to work with, we didn't need a calculator, but otherwise you could have gone 350 divided by 70, because that makes 70%. So if you want to get 1% divided by 70, then multiply it by 100 to get the whole amount, or multiply it just by the 30, which is what you're really interested in, this, this area here. So there are many different ways. But the answer will be the same. So 150 kilometers squared. Looking quickly at the next question. We've got the scatter diagram gives information about the temperatures at eight different heights up a mountain. So we've got the temperature and the different heights. At a height of 1000 meters, the temperature is negative 13 degrees Celsius. So there is the height. So height is represented horizontally. So we shouldn't confuse that. So we're going up to 1000, which is here. And the temperature is negative 13. So it's negative 10 here, negative 11. 12, 13. So plot this information on the scattered diagram, which is what we've just done. Draw a line of best fit on the scattered diagram. Draw a line of best fit. You're going to need to use a ruler that goes through the dots, trying to keep an equal distance between the dots on each side. You can't be 100% accurate here if you're estimating unless you use complex calculations. So all the questions that you're going to have related to this will be estimations. So we've drawn the line of best fit and we'll use the line of best fit to estimate the difference between the temperature at a height of 550 metres and at a height of 950. So 550 and 950. 550 is between 500 and 600. And 950 is between 900 and 1000. So we'll look at them in terms of temperature. So this is negative six, so it goes down. And this is negative 12. What is the difference in temperature? It's six degrees Celsius. Number four, here is a pentagon. The pentagon has one line of symmetry, so it's not a regular pentagon, it's an irregular one. The line of symmetry, since we have this being 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees, seems to be this one. Not absolutely accurate because I'm not using a ruler, but you get the idea. But to work out the size of the angle marked with X, this one here. So since this is 90 degrees, it's a right angle, this is going to be 90 degrees as well. And this one can be 90 degrees 
and this one 90 degrees. So to work out this one here, this angle here, we can do 125, take away 90. So that gives us 35 degrees. And then this means that this is 35 degrees because we have a line of symmetry. And we know that in a triangle, the inner angles will add up to 180 degrees. So we have 35 and 35 already. to give us 70. So 180 take away the 70 is 110 degrees. So X is equal to 110 degrees. We'll add the answer in the box. Nicola wants to put a flat roof on a bike store. The roof will be made of concrete in the shape of a cuboid as shown. Nicola wants to put a metal strip along two of the longest edges of the floor. She knows the density of concrete is 2,300 kilograms per cubic meters. The mass of one meter of metal strip is five kilograms. Given the formula for density, and the question is work out the total mass of the concrete and the strips she wants. The working out here in this area rather than within the box below, and it should be fine as long as I don't write in this particular area where it says do not write. So we're working out the total mass of the concrete and the strips. Start, let's start with the concrete. Um, what do we know about the concrete? We know the density of it, which is 2,300 kilograms per cubic meters. So if we plug this into the formula that we have up here, density will be 2,300 is equal to mass, which is what we are after and we don't know, divided by volume. Now volume we can work out but we don't know yet. So this is what we're going to do next. If you look at the different dimensions, we've got them in meters and centimeters. We'll convert them all to meters, given that the unit we've got here is cubic meters, so kilograms per cubic meters. So we keep this as it is and this, but we'll convert this into 0 0.12 meters. So to find the volume, we'll go 2 times 3.5 times 0 0.12, and that gives us 0 0.84. So we'll put it in here. So what we need to work out now is the mass of the concrete. And we know this, we know this, but we don't know the mass. So the mass is at the top, and if it's at the top, that means... It's worked out by multiplying these two that are at the bottom. So mass is equal to 2300 times 0 0.84 gives us 1932. So we have the mass for the concrete. We need to work out the mass of the metal strip. So one meter of metal strip is five kilograms and she's going to put metal strip along the two of the longest edges of the roof, which are these two, because this is 3.5, the other one is two. So 3.5 and 3.5 gives us seven. So seven times five is 35. Because one meter is equal to five kilograms and we've got seven meters in total. So we'll add this now to the 1932 we worked out before. So this gives us 
1967 kilograms. Question number six. May has this information about 100 flowering plants in her shop. She will take a plant at random from these plants. Work out the probability that this plant will have a large flower and a long stem. So we have 100 flowers in total. Which ones are the ones which have a large flower and a long stem? So large and long, large flower, long stem is 29 of them. So 29 out of 100. You can leave it like this or convert it to a percentage or a decimal. Whichever you write should be fine. There is another question which links to this. May will take at random a plant from the 72 plants that have a large flower. Work out the probability that this plant will have a short stem. So this time round, it's out of 72. So we're looking at the ones that will have a short stem. So all of these will have a large flower. Short stem is 43. So 43 out of the 72. So out of all the flowers that, all of the plants that had a large flower, 43 of them had a short stem. So 43 out of the 72. Looking at the next question. Sal works in a dress shop. She wants to know how well the labels on the dress hanger agree with the true size of the dresses. The table shows information about some hangers and dresses. Sal thinks that two in every seven dresses are on hangers with the wrong label. Is Sal correct? So if you look at the table, it might look rather complex, but what this means is that you've got the label on the hangers, like for example, for this one is 10. And then the true size of the dress is 10. So we had eight cases when this was true. Then we had two cases when the label on the hanger was 10, but in fact, the true size of the dress was 12. We had one case when the label was 10, but the true size of the dress was 14. One case when the um, size on the label was 10, but the actual size was 16. And no cases when the size was 10, but in fact it was 18. So this is the true one. This is the case of true size. And we've got then for the 12, so those where they match the 12 here and the 12 there, that's the true ones. So that's the, where the sizes match. 14 with 14, that's this one. 16 with 16 here and 18 with 18. So the ones that I've circled will give us the, the matching. So the cases where the label on the hanger matched the true size of the dress. And I need to take off this one. So we'll work out how many of these true cases we have and how many of those where there is no matching. Adding them up, we've got eight and nine and 12 and 13 and 13. 
to give us 55. Now, adding up the rest of the cases, we get 2 and 1 and 1 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 2 and 1 and 1 and 1 and 2 and 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1. So this is 22 cases where the size of the dress is wrong and 55 where it is correct. So if I write this as a ratio, we have wrong and correct, 22 wrong, 55 correct. I can simplify this, I can divide both of the numbers by 11. So 22 divided by 11 gives me 2, 55 divided by 11 gives me 5. So this means in seven dresses in total, two of them will be wrong. Five of them will be correct. So Sal is right. And we need to write that as our answer. James has a contract to paint 30 identical water tanks. He has to paint the outside surfaces of each tank, but not the top. So we're looking at the sides, but not the top. Each surface is rectangular. James knows that wanting of paint is enough to cover 12 square meters of surface and it costs 26 pounds 99 pence. So we'll start with the area of each side. And we've got this front one here, which is 1.1 times 0 0.6, because this one is the same as this dimension. So it's 0 0.66 and this is identical to the one on the back so we'll add 0 0.66 again and we'll look at this on the right which is 0 0.8 times 0 0.6 0 0.48 and another 0 0.48 for this side which is identical and finally, we have the one at the bottom, which is worked out by multiplying 1.1 with 0 0.8, 0 0.88. So adding this all together, this is 3.16. So this is just for one of the tanks. We've got 30 identical tanks. So we'll go 3.16 times 30 it's 94.8 square meters so that's how much surface it needs to paint in total we know that wanting of paint will cover 12 uh, square meters so we'll see how many 12s will fit into 94.8 so 94.8 divided by 12 gives us 7.9 but of course you can't buy 7.9 tins of paint so you're going to have to buy 8 so then 8 times 26.99 to give us the cost is 215 pounds and 92 pence double checking what the question is asking so we've got to work out the total cost of the tins of paint who will need for all the 30 water tanks which is what we have done so we'll add this as the answer there is no specific space to add it in there so we can leave it where it is we'll now look at question number nine question number nine Andrus has an oil fired heating system 
in a 30-day period used a full tank of oil at a constant rate per day. At a different time of the year, the amount of oil Andrews used per day is one third of the rate used in the 30 day period. How many days should a full tank of oil last at this new rate? So if we imagine a full tank being up to here, so one third is used for 30 days. The other third for 30 days and the last third for 30 days. So it is 30 times 3 or 3 times 30 to give us 90 days as the answer. Use reverse calculation to show a check of your answer. So what we did before was multiply 3 by 30 to get 90. So we'll now go 90 divided by 3 to give us 30. Or 90 divided by 30 to give us 3. Lina recorded the number of late trains at the station in a day over a period of time. She shows this information in a diagram. So we've got the number of late trains in a day and the number of days. So we've got the information here. We've got the key as well. So for this information, work out the median number of late trains in a day. So looking at the key is very, very important here. We've got two stars to mean two days, and the four is. Uh, the number of trains that were late each day. So there were two days in this case when four trains were late each day. So now looking at this, there would be two days when um, one train was late. So we'll have, to have a one and a one. So one train and then another train the other day. And then I'd have two trains, two trains, two trains, two trains, so four days in a row, or maybe not in a row, and then we've got three, so we have three days when there were three trains late, and we have two days when there were four, two days when there were five, one day when there were six, zero days with seven, zero days with eight, and one day with nine. Given that you haven't got many numbers to work with, I suggest crossing out both sides. But there are other ways as well you can work this out. So the number in the middle is a three, so the median is three. And we'll add it as the answer. Lena says the median number of late trains in a day from this information is a good estimate of the average number of trains late over the period of time. Is Lena correct? Explain why you think this. So we've got to compare it with the average, which is a mean. We of course have other averages as well, but I'll compare it to the mean. So quickly work out the mean. So we'll multiply the number of stars by the number given. At the bottom, so 2 times 1 is 2, 4 times 2 is 8, 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 5 is 10, 1 times 6 is 6, 0 times 7 is 0, 0 times 8 is 0, 1 times 9 is 9. All of these add up, add up to 52. And we'll divide by how many days there are in total. So we've got just to count the number of stars really. So that is 15. So divided by 15, it gives us about 3.5. And the median we had was 3. So this kind of gives us um, a similar number. But we can say yes, mean is 3.5.
Question number 11. Joanna is a landscape gardener. She has to fill a circular space with flowers. The radius of the circular space is 4.5 metres, as shown in the picture here. Joanna will plant 40 flowers per square metre of space. She will plant four times as many red flowers as white flowers. How many red flowers will she plant? So there is a lot of information here, but we'll take it in turn. So look at each sentence in turn. So Joanna will plant 40 flowers per square meter of space. Now, how many square meters are there in here? Do we know that? We don't know it yet. So we need to work it out. And we know the formula for the area of the circle is pi r squared. On the front page of this paper, we're told to use 3.14 as pi. And that's what I'm going to do. So times. The radius is 4.5 squared. And we know through bid mass that we need to do 4.5 squared first. So 4.5 times 4.5 is 20.25. So 3.14 times 20.25. So that's 63. 585 five squared meters. Now we know Joanna will plant 40 flowers per square meter. So it's going to be 40 times 63.585, which is 2543.4. Is how many flowers she will plant. And I know you can't have 0.4 of a flower, but I'm going to keep the answer like that for the time being until we get to the final step. So we know also that she will plant four times as many red flowers as white. So if I write the ratio like this, red and white, there would be one white and four red. So there are five in total. So to work out the number of red flowers, I'm going to have to divide by 5 and multiply by 4. So 2,543.4 divided by 5 times by 4. And this gives us 2,034.75. Which I'm going to round to 2,035 red flowers. Looking at the final question now. So Jim owns a small business. The table shows information about the weekly wage of the 40 workers. We've got the weekly wage and number of workers. Jim wants to increase the mean wage by 4% plus £10. Jim thinks the new mean weekly wage of these workers will be more than £415. Is Jim correct? You must show your work. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out the mean wage of the 40 workers that is now. And then we'll add to it 4% plus £10 and we'll, um, we'll compare it to the original mean. There are different ways you could solve this. So you could work out 4% of 320 and add it on top, multiply it by 10 workers and add the £10 for each worker. So that would be £100 in total. Get that result. Repeat the process for the 370. 420, 470, 520, and so on. And we could get a, um, a mean at the end. But I think the easiest way um, to do it is to work out the um, total that these 10 people get 
the 13, the 8, the 7 and the 2. 220 times 10 is 3200. Then 370 times 13 is 4810. 420 times 8 is 3360. 470 times 3290. 520 times 2 is 1040. And adding these together gives us 15,700. So this is the total amount they all get. And if we divide it by 40, it's going to give us the mean wage, which is currently £392.50. So if we add 4% um, to it and then £10, let's see if it's going to give us £415. So initially, work out the 4% of £392.50. There are many ways you could do this, but if you divide this by 100, it's going to give you 1%. Then you multiply it by 4 to give you 4%. Dividing 392.5 by 100 gives us 3.925. 3.925. Times 4 equals 15.7 or £15.70. So that's the 4% that we need to add on top of the um, original amount. So £392.50, add £15.70 to it, it gives us £408.20. Now we need to add the £10 as well. So it gives us £418.20. Jim is correct. At this point, now that we've finished all of the questions, it's a good idea to go back and check your answers. And with this calculator paper, if you worked out something by hand, it's good to go and check using a calculator, double check as well. So that's really um, a very important step. Also, make sure you've written your answers in the boxes provided where there is one.